Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Rushmere Baptist Church. It's good to see you all this morning. I'm Hazel. I'm one of the ministers here. And that is the last Sunday I can say that because today is Heather's last service with us here at Rushmere. And we'll be recognising that later in the service. But we're here to worship our amazing living God. And I want to begin with words from Psalm 100. It says, shout to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness, come before him with joyful songs, know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues throughout all generations. Amazing words of promise for us this morning and for the days ahead. And I invite you now to join us as we come and we do sing joyful songs and we worship our living Lord. Do join in. Nobody else can hear you. Sing your hearts out this morning in praise. Good, good, oh, you 
And we're going to continue praising God now by coming to God in the time of prayer. So let us pray. Let the name of the Lord be praised both now and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Lord, we praise your name today. We call you King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We call you our Saviour and our friend. And I'll leave a moment just for you to call out to God, calling him by the name that you know him best. Lord, we thank you for your care, for your attention to detail, for knowing everything about us, for planning us, for being beside us, above us and below us. Lord, we give you this day. We give you everything that has happened in it already. We give you this day whether we remembered whether we had an extra hour in bed or not. And we give you everything in this day that's going to happen those things that are totally unknown to us, but completely known to you. And Lord, in your hands we place our hopes, our fears, our worries and anxieties, our smiles, our joy, our celebration. We praise you, Lord. And Lord, our prayer this morning, as in every day, is that your kingdom will come. And so praying your kingdom come, Lord, we pray for peace in places that are experiencing conflict. We pray for healing in places where there is hurt. We pray for reconciliation where there is separation. 
We pray for unity where there is disagreement. Lord, you know those places that are in our heart that cover all of those situations and we lift them to you. And Lord, as we pray for others, we pray for ourselves. Loving Lord, we are sorry for the times when we have put ourselves before others. Forgive us, Lord. When we are jealous, when we do not stand with others, forgive us, Lord. When we speak and we do not listen, when we talk a lot but do very little, Lord, forgive us. Help us, Lord, to know that we are forgiven and that each day we have a fresh start. And Lord, I pray for us all. I pray that you'll open our minds to the Holy Spirit, that you'll give us freedom and courage and all the resources that we need to be the people that you want us to be. Amen. I'm going to hand over to Heather. Thanks, Hayes. <clears throat> Thank you. So, well, it seems ages ago now, but the first time I saw Rushmere Baptist Church was, well, I'd been out running across the Finn Valley, as I still do, and we came across this little village. I know I'd lived in Ipswich for a long time, but I'd never really been to Rushmere, and my friend and I saw this little chapel, as we thought, and we peered in through the door here, and um, we were wondering about the people here, who was here, and what it was like, and what went on here, and she said to me, I can see you in a place like this. Well, it will be 12 years on the 1st of January, just in a few weeks' time, since I came to you as minister in training. And um, that was during a period of interregnum after Eric had left. I think it was about 18 months between the two of us. Um, it was initially you agreed to have me for three to six months on a trial period. And I'm very grateful to you and to God for you accepting me even for that short period. This rookie minister who had very little experience at that stage. Well, in those early months, you were looking for another minister, obviously, and um, someone had been and it hadn't worked out. And we were in a church meeting that I was chairing, and I can see it as if it was yesterday. Um, Val Dufour, in her imminent, in, in, what's the word I'm looking for? Inimitable, imit I can't say it, in that style, you know what I mean, and if you know Val, you will know what I mean. Um, in her broad Welsh accent, which I'm not going to try and say, she said, she stood up and she said, when are we going to talk about the elephant in the room? And I was chairing the meeting and I said, what's the elephant in the room, Val? And she turned with a pointing finger that I can still see as if it was happening yesterday. She said, you are. And, well... The rest is history, really, and uh, all those years have gone by. Um, and I want to say thank you for having us. Thank you for having Phil and I. It's been such a privilege to serve you here. And um, long before I came here, this church was known for its warmth and its acceptance of people. And it still is. And this comes out of a godly acceptance and embrace of all comers. A willingness, no, more than that, a deep desire to show God's love and acceptance to everyone, no matter what their background, whatever their experience, whoever they are. And it's still true today and it deeply reflects God's love in you. And I know that God will continue to use you in this way. You have blessed Phil and I deeply. We've been through some rocky times together, but you have been with us every step of the way. And um, that it's been such a blessing to be part of this church. 
just about every time I've led a service here over the, all these years, um, I have prayed at the end that 3,000 year old um, Aaronic blessing in the, at the end of the service, also known as the priestly blessing in number six. The Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you will bless the Israelites. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace. So they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. Now, Although I've been reading it every service, you will notice that I still have to read it. I still can't say it off the top of my head because it's because my brain is scrambled. It's dyslexic. And I'm sure lots of you are used, used to that and have seen evidence of that, plenty of evidence of that over the time I've been here. It's an ancient priestly blessing. And it was given to Moses by God to speak over his brother Aaron, the high priest, Aaron's son and the people of Israel too, in around 1400 to 1200 BC. They were in the midst of challenging times um, through the will of, through, of wilderness and wanderings in preparation for their entrance to the promised land. The ancient blessing from God that was given to Moses is real and powerful, just as powerful as it is for us, just as powerful for us today as it was for in Moses' time 3,000 years ago. It has been sung and passed on from generation to generation in Jewish homes and synagogues for all of those 3,000 years and in Christian homes for the last 2,000. This blessing is the oldest surviving biblical instruction in existence today, inscription in, in existence today. In 1979, archaeologists discovered what is now, are now known as the Ketef Hinnom Silver Scrolls, just outside the old city of Jerusalem. Two tiny silver scrolls about the size of a cigarette were found in a collapsed tomb with this blessing from number six inscribed on them. One of the most significant biblical archaeological finds in history, dating from the 7th century BC. The priestly blessing is also known, is, is, is the most quoted blessing in all of scripture. Aaron was the first high priest. And when Jewish priests offered a word of blessing, they would put their hands in a certain shape, which I can't actually do with the way you separate your fingers. Um, and it made the letter Shin, yeah, to represent the name Al Shaddai, or Almighty God. And then, you may not know this, I, I almost hope you don't, but it's true, that the actor Leonard Nimroy in, uh, adapted this for his Vulcan blessing in Star Trek. I don't know, how's it go? Live long and prosper, which actually isn't a bad summary of the blessing. And that's where he got that idea from live long and prosper. I just have, just, I want to quite, quite briefly look at what's included in that blessing that I've been praying over you, over you. The Lord bless you. Well, to bless is, as you know, I'm sure, is to look favourably on someone, to bestow goodness and benefit. And who better could we ask to bless us than God himself, who knows us better than we know ourselves, know our needs better than we know ourselves. So we're asking him to meet those needs and to, to show his favour on those we're blessing. Bless you and keep you. Well, the, um, the word for keep, the Hebrew word for uh, keep you means to guard, to protect or to watch over. We find the word used throughout the Psalms uh, in places where it says things like, he will watch over, the, the, watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going both now and forevermore. Make his face shine upon you. I love this. Um, the word um, panin, which is the Hebrew word used in this case, can also mean countenance or presence. When you see someone you love or they see you or someone you're really fond of or maybe you haven't seen for a while, their face lights up. And it's talking about the relationship between us and God and how he delights in us 
And it's a prayer that he, he will delight in us and we will know that relationship between us, that our, his face would shine on us. Um, it, it communicates the affection and pleasure in the relationship between us. And be gracious to you. Well, we know, don't we, that God loves us just as we are. He doesn't matter what we've done or what we will do. He just loves us and that's his grace. He forgives us if we ask him and accepts us to himself. God's grace. What could be more important than that or welcome than that? Turn his face towards you. Another ancient expression that describes God giving us his full attention. Listening to our prayers. Knowing deeply our concerns. Which of course he does. Although the words we utter are important, he sees our heart. He knows where it comes from. He knows what the true meaning of our words are better than we do. He sees the depths of us. He turns his face towards us and give you peace. The Hebrew word shalom includes things like health and safety, prosperity and wholeness. Ultimately, it describes God supplying our physical and material needs, sure, but also our emotional and spiritual needs. I often think when I'm lost, when I'm lost for words for, to know what to pray for someone, I will pray God's peace. It covers so much. It's a prayer for deep healing and communion with God. So pulling all these ideas together, we find that this blessing describes God's loving provision for us. His watchful, protective gaze over his people. It's about God's heart for us, listening to our prayers. And, and it says, doesn't it, throughout, God is for you. May God be for you. May you know that he is for you as he is. More than that, it's about um, his desire to go deeper with us, to meet us at our deepest level, bringing hope, healing and wholeness as only he can. Sometimes when we pray blessing, we think it's a, a nice thing to do. It's almost, if we're not careful, can be on the level as have a nice day. But no, it's far deeper than this. We're praying for the deepest healing, the deepest wholeness that God can bring that only God can bring. Those on the Freedom in Christ um, course that will finish this week um, will, will be, have been reminded of God's heart to see us freed from the stuff that's hold us, held us back over the years. Things, unhelpful habits, unhelpful thoughts that, and, that we've taken on board over the years and um, he wants to set us free from all that and this blessing encompasses that, the wholeness that knowing God can bring. And the fullness of the Holy Spirit. When I pray this blessing for you, it, it includes my desire that you and I should know the fullness of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Bringing healing and wholeness. And if you think you know about all that, well, we, none of us do. There's always more. There's always more of the Spirit to experience and to love. So, of course, these words had no human author. God himself is the originator, and he alone can fulfill them. And when God instructed, to speak, God instructed priests to, instruct, to speak them over Israel, he was making it clear that they were acting as his mouthpiece, human voices to proclaim his loving intentions. God is the one who activates these words in the lives of the listeners to do for them what they cannot do for themselves. And this has been my prayer for you every week. We can't earn the blessing. We can't live up to it or draw, on, draw it down. It's a prayer. It's a free gift from God. And of course, I've never had the power to bless you. Only God has the power to do that. But I've had the privilege on countless occasions to declare God's blessing over you. This blessing, as we've seen, was written for priests originally, for priests to declare over the people. And in other denominations, um, someone, only someone who has been priested would have such authority. But here at Rushmere and in the um, Baptist denomination, we believe in the priesthood of all believers. 
so that every one of you who knows Jesus can share communion, can baptise a fellow believer and declare blessing over each other. You can declare blessing over each other, just as I have. And as I leave, I, this is what I want to encourage you to do. To think about the weight of that blessing. To be thankful for his provision for us all, both in times gone by and into the future. And pray that profound degree of healing and wholeness that these words convey over each other and over this church. And for his equipping too. Right back in May, not long after lockdown had started and coronavirus had hit the land, um, Tim Hughes, uh, who's the vicar at Gas Street Church in Birmingham, put together the, uh, the, the UK blessing. He invited churches from all over Britain, out the UK, to, to pray this blessing, to sing it over the UK. And it was the church's blessing to the land. And, and now it has had over four million uh, views on YouTube, but over in a, in a couple of days it was up to two million because the, the, the people across the country responded to the words of blessing. It's because it's deep, it's profound, it's meaningful and it's real. And there's an Ipswich version which some of our youth, some of our worship leaders took part in. And um, we're going to play it in a moment. And I want you to, I want to invite you to use it, to dig deep and to pray this prayer over each other and over this church. If you don't know the words, don't worry, hum it, see, you know, lar it, whatever, but join in from the bottom of your heart and pray with all that you have for each other, for this church, for Hazel and the leadership team that you will be, we will all be, all that God is calling us to be. Let's declare that blessing as we play the Ipswich version.
here and it's come to that time where we've come to wish a little bit of a goodbye to Heather and Phil and normally we would have had a big celebration here at Rushmere wouldn't we we're famous celebration. party party okay <laughs> celebration of all that you've oh. done Heather <laughs> with, a, with a tinge of sadness but we obviously the current times mean that that's not possible. So I'd like to invite the both of you to watch a PowerPoint that's been put together for, a video that's been put together of some of the times over the last nearly 12 years that you've been here. Um, you won't be surprised. We've had a few tears and a little bit of laughter here during that. Um, luckily, Phil can stand nice and close to Heather because I just love to reach out and give her a hug now, but obviously we're not allowed to. 
So Heather, in appreciation of everything you've done here, because we can't do what we would normally have done to say goodbye, which would and to have a massive great party and to celebrate everything that you've done with lots of cake, I'd like to present you with this is a collection of, of memories and things that people have sent in to say thank you. So that's wow. from the entire oh, wow. church. Oh my goodness! And thank we've got you. a few a few gifts as well to present. Oh wow! <laughs> Thank you. My goodness. That's from the Rushmere family. Um, we've got a few, a few, a few other things as well. Right. Okay. So. Just put this down. Yeah. yeah. Can't feel. <laughs> Be the man at the moment. So we'd like to give you. We'd like. We want you to have something to remember us by. So we have got a piece of artwork coming, oh. especially for you. But it hasn't arrived yet. But it's on the way. But this is so that you can see what oh, it is wow. and the mem and the words behind it. Oh, I love this stuff. Yeah. Lovely. Thank you. That's beautiful. I can't say much. <laughs> <laughs> Another gift to for your inner Lady Marsden there. <laughs> oh wow! Wow, that was amazing. Thank you. For everybody else, Heather's got off to Downton Abbey. And that's Thank for you. us. And I don't. I, won't, I was going to invite you to say something, but I won't at the moment. But I'd like to pray for you, if I may. Is that okay for both of you? <laughs> Father, we've come to this time together to worship you, and we gather as family together to talk to you, to praise you, and to listen to you. But Lord, we recognise that our thoughts, that in our thoughts this morning, are Heather and Phil. Lord, we recognise in ourselves and in Heather and Phil feelings of thankfulness, feelings of anticipation, feelings of trepidation, but we have gratitude and thankfulness. We have uncertainty, but we have hope and security. But we know that above us and below us, to our left and to our right, we have you, loving Lord. So in this time of goodbye, we acknowledge that this is your church, Lord, and each of us are your children and you have a plan for each and every one of us. We thank you, Lord, for the journey that Heather and Phil have been on with us. And we remember times of cheers and tears, times of pain and gain, times of commiseration and celebration. Loving Lord, we thank you for all the blessings that we have received during Heather and Phil's ministry. For the love of patience and pastoral care shown to us, Lord, we thank you. For the fruits of study and prayer in teaching and preaching, we thank you. For new thoughts and widening of our horizons, we thank you, Lord. For opportunities taken together as a church and its ministers to show your love to the community. For those we have seen come to faith, for growth in faith and understanding, for dedications and baptisms, we thank you, Lord. And loving Lord, we thank you for Heather and Phil, and we lift them before you. We pray for wisdom and guidance as they seek to serve you somewhere new. Lord, pour your spirit upon Heather. Pour your spirit out upon Phil and bless them in the next stage of their journey together. Guide them into new ways in which to use the gifts that you have given them. Lord, you are doing a new thing and we trust you in it. Amen. Heather and Phil, please do not forget us. No chance. <laughs> but hold us in your heart and in your prayers and we will hold you in our hearts and our prayers too. I pray that you'll stay close to God and you'll be attentive to his Holy Spirit. May you be joyful in everything that you do because the Lord your God is your saviour and he is your strength. And he will enable you to go to new heights and we look forward to seeing what they are. So keep being you together, son and daughter of the living Lord. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. And do you want to say anything now? He's still not capable. Well, no, I... Able. I more just, than capable. I just, 
Um, only, I, the, there aren't really words, I don't know if you have any, Phil, but um, to, just to say thank you, really, I, for all these gifts, for those memories, what a wonderful PowerPoint. I think Jean might be to blame, I mean, to have credit for that, thank you. And um, I don't know what else to say other than thank you for allowing us to lead your church and to be part of this family, which I know God will continue to bless and bring others to know him through you. Yeah, I'd echo all of that <laughs> and um, just thank this, you know, you as a church for allowing God to use you so greatly over the years. And, uh, you know, we trust trust uh, God with you over the next years coming forward and that he's going to do mighty things with you and bless each one. Uh, we do know and love everyone individually and, and uh, we'll be praying for, for each one. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We're going to sing one final song. I don't know if you want to introduce it, Heather. I know you're going to close in blessing after we've sung it. So let's all sing together in our homes, in our hearts. How great is our God. Oh! 
So with all those things we've spoken of wrapped up in this blessing, a prayer for healing and wholeness, for equipping, for blessing above all, that you and we would be all that God is calling us to be, that we would be used by him to make others known, that many lives would be changed and set free through knowing him. I pray this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace today and always. Thank you.